In the same way that we had polar bonds and then we had polar molecules, we can have chiral atoms, chirality centers, and then we can have chiral molecules. How do we determine if a molecule is chiral? Well, ultimately, the only way to be 100% sure very often would be to build a model, then build the model of the mirror image, and then work them in space and see if they can be superposed. However, again, there are some shortcuts that we can take um, that will help us determine if a molecule is chiral. First of all, a molecule that has exactly one chirality center will always be chiral. It just inherits the chirality from that one chirality center. A molecule with two or more chirality centers most of the time is chiral. However, if that molecule also has a mirror plane of symmetry, it will not be chiral. We're going to see that those molecules have a special name. I do want to warn you, however, that it is most definitely possible for a molecule to be chiral even if it doesn't have a chirality center. This is a really common trick question found on things like standardized exams. Here's an example. This is an example of an alene. An alene has a carbon-carbon double bond directly attached to sharing a carbon with another carbon-carbon double bond. They're fairly uncommon. They're kind of unstable, so we don't see them that often. But it turns out that if we build a model of this molecule, you would see that the two groups here on this trigonal planar carbon are in the plane of the paper. But the groups of this trigonal planar carbon are perpendicular. One is sticking out on a wedge, one is going back into the plane on a dash. They're rotated 90 degrees from each other. Turns out this rotation can have a direction. And that then gives it chirality. How do we prove this? Well, again, what we're going to have to do is look at the mirror image so here's our original molecule. We reflect it over to here. So remember, groups close to the mirror on one side become close to the mirror on the other. Then we're going to take this molecule. We're going to have to flip it 180 degrees, right? So that this carbon moves to there, and this carbon moves to there, like this. And one of the things that happens when we do 180 degree rotation is that groups on wedges go on to dashes, and groups on dashes go on to wedges. So we have this. Now we take this molecule, we slide it over, and we can easily line up the chlorine, the carbon, the methyl group, this carbon, and that carbon. Those will totally superpose. However, we can see that the methyl group on this structure is lined with a hydrogen, and the hydrogen is aligned with a methyl. So these two are not superposable. So what we have is mirror images that are not superposable. That means that they are chiral. There are molecules that have chirality centers, but they're not chiral because they have mirror planes. These types of molecules are given a special designation. They are called meso compounds. A meso compound is a molecule with chirality centers that is not chiral because it has a mirror plane of symmetry. Here are a couple examples of meso compounds. Look at this one. We have this carbon here. It has methyl, chlorine, hydrogen, and then CH and all of this stuff. So that's a chirality center. Turns out this one is similar. Chlorine, hydrogen, methyl, and then this stuff. Chirality center. But if you notice, we can draw a mirror plane right here through the center of this bond. This carbon would reflect here. The chlorine on a wedge would reflect to a chlorine on a wedge. Hydrogen on a dash to a hydrogen on a dash. Methyl in the plane to methyl in the plane. They're perfect mirror image halves. That's a mirror plane. This molecule will not be chiral. Similar, we see this very often on cis ring molecules. If we look, for example, here, 
we have chlorine on a wedge, chlorine on a wedge, hydrogen not written on a dash, hydrogen not written on a dash. These are chirality centers, you can work that out. If we draw a mirror plane right through the center of the ring, right in between these two atoms, you can see that the two halves are mirror images of each other. So these are chirality centers, but we have a mirror plane. That molecule will not be a chiral molecule. It will be superposable on its mirror image. There is a situation where sometimes a molecule can appear to be chiral because of the way it's rotated, its conformation. Rotating into complicated conformations can cause mirror planes to not be readily apparent. Here's an example. Unfortunately, when I wrote this for the notes, I made a typo. So go with the, the non-crossed out atoms here. If we look at this molecule, um, it's actually this molecule right here rotated 180 degrees around this bond. Can you see that when I rotate this molecule, which we clearly see as a mirror plane, it now appears not to have a mirror plane. We put the mirror here, methyl doesn't reflect in anything, and so forth. And in fact, if we make the mirror image and just try to slide them over side by side or something like that, they would not uh, over, they would not superpose. It turns out there is a way we could rotate them and make them superpose. So it's not a perfect example. But nevertheless, if we weren't being careful, we might miss the fact that this has a mirror plane because it is rotated into a conformation that is not very symmetric. So, in general, staggered conformations are going to be considered sort of unsymmetric. And when we're looking for mirror planes, we may want to rotate the molecule into eclipsed conformations. This can also happen in ring compounds. So for example, if we look at chairs, this is a chair, here's another chair, it's actually the chair flip, of the cis 1,2-dibromo molecule. If we just take these two chairs directly and try to superpose them, you would see that you wouldn't be able to superpose them. So therefore you would say, oh, these must be enantiomers, but they're not. It turns out if we take these molecules and we make them perfectly flat, then these bromines which are one axial, one equatorial in the chair, are both on upper bonds, they would end up both on wedges. And we would be able to draw a mirror plane of symmetry through this six-membered ring, splitting it into two mirror image halves. So even though at first glance these look like they're not superposable, and possibly even chiral molecules, once we draw the most symmetric conformation, which is not all distorted like this into staggered-like conformation, but instead all eclipse in a flat ring, we can clearly see the mirror plane. So it's just something to be careful of. You don't want to accidentally trick yourself.